Welcome to Jason Live. My name is Haley Nelson, and we are back with our STEM career series where we learn about careers in science, technology, engineering, and math from role models in those fields. And today's role model is Heather Camp. Heather, she is a professional runner. And not only that, which is amazing, she runs for Team USA Minnesota and is sponsored by ASICS America. She's a coach, she's a public speaker, and she has a degree in kinesiology, which she uses to master her sport. And we're gonna talk all about our STEM role model when we connect with Heather in just a moment. But first I wanna remind you that today's event is live and interactive. So if you have questions while you're watching, you'll find a box right below this video window send in your questions as we go. We will try to get to as many of them as possible. And I think we should begin. Let's let's go ahead and meet Heather. Heather, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. We are really, really excited. It's not every day that we have a professional runner, someone who is on the US team come on our show. And a lot of people might not automatically associate science with running, but they are right. quite closely tied. You mm -hmm. have a, a degree in kinesiology. Can you tell us what is what that is and a little bit about it? Sure, yeah, so kinesiology is the study of human movement. Um, for me, I really took an interest in possibly going into physical therapy when I'm done running professionally. So you kind of get the background of like the anatomy and physiology, but then you're applying it to like the physics of how the body moves, what's the most efficient way to move and stuff like that. So for a runner who's trying to just get everything out of myself as I can, um, it's really interesting just to learn how my running form and the way I strike the ground and stuff like that can make an impact on my performances. So it's it's almost it's the science of the movement of the body almost. Yes, yeah. But you're kind of lucky because you get to study like the science of sport and sports psychology and everything else that goes along with it. So it's like a really broad um, degree. Wow, it's kind of all your interest in one. We have a question from Elliot. Did you go into kinesiology because you liked running, or did you want to study it on its own? What would you be doing if you weren't running? Yeah, well, I originally, my first sports love was gymnastics. So there's a part of me that says that if I were better at it, then maybe I would have continued to do that. But I had my first ever really big sports injury in gymnastics in high school. I was doing a floor pass and then sprain and tore ligaments in both my ankles. Um, so I think that my doctor, my PT, who kind of helped me figure out how to put myself back together and get back in time for the track season that spring was kind of my hero. So that was my first really initial interest in just the study of human movement and how I could apply that to a job in the future. So. Um, I wouldn't say it's specifically because of my running, but just having an experience with an injury. So what is it like to be a professional runner? What does that look like day to day? Yeah, um, it's probably different for every um, individual. You can be on kind of a lot of different levels of um, how much sponsorship and stuff you get like that. But um, for me, I'm sponsored by ASICS. It's a shoe company. Um, and my team is called Team USA Minnesota and it's based out of Minneapolis here. Um, so those groups kind of help um, provide me with just like a stipend and travel support and all the ASICS gear I could possibly imagine um, to make sure that I'm geared up when I compete and practice and stuff like that. Um, but then really I just um, train every day essentially, do a lot of hard work to make sure that I'm as prepared as possible when I go and race. And um, most people are aware of like the Olympics, the Olympic trials and all that stuff that happens every four years. But between that, there's a lot of other really great opportunities to either represent the United States in world championships on off Olympic years, or even just you know race with some of the best in the world at these other big meets called Diamond League races and stuff like that. So um, yeah, pretty much I just, get to travel around the world and do what I love. So it's pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And, yeah. and it, you get to do it a lot, not just uh, not just one race every four years. That's good. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Question from Mrs. O'Hara's class. Uh, what are your two favorite drills uh, or stretches or lifts that help promote proper running form and efficiency? Oh gosh, um, it wouldn't be one specific drill per se. I guess I could pull one out from it, but um, plyometric work is kind of good, I think, for um, some of like the the quick ground contact time. Like your the speed that you run is essentially like partially just how quickly you can get your feet off the ground. Um, so and putting power through the ground as you do it. So it's a lot of jumping and bounding and like hopping on one leg and all that kind of stuff that I think has helped me like develop more speed. 
Um, so that's a really big one. And then just getting in the weight room. I think I saw a little bit ago there was a pull-up picture going by. Um, I think that being able to um, be able to utilize your full body, um, not just your legs as people think for running, but your core is really important to prevent injury. Um, so that's a huge part of what I do. And then um, pull-ups is something that has been a big part of my post-injury career. <laughs> Wow, plyometric training is is so tough because it takes so much burst, like a big burst of energy mm -hmm. to jump, oh, yeah. to spring. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I can see how that would really be directly applied. We have yeah. another question coming in. How does knowing how your body works help you run? Um, well, I think that for me especially, like I've always had coaches who are really intentional about having me visualize like the physiological changes that are going on in my body when I train to make me feel more confident that like I am getting stronger, I am getting more efficient aerobically to be able to breathe and take in oxygen and utilize it in my muscles. So um, I think just having that awareness of what I'm doing and the intent of every workout I do um, has been really helpful for me to even just listen to my body because I think like the hardest thing for a lot of athletes at this level is they actually train too hard um, just because they want to be the best and they want to work really hard and you do everything you can, but it's possible to get overtrained or to get injured in the process. So um, recognizing like, okay, today is supposed to be a workout where I'm running lactate threshold pace. So I shouldn't get to a point where I'm creating, I'm sure you guys have heard of lactic acid, that burny stuff that you get if you try to run like an all out 400 on the track or something like that. I know if I start to feel kind of that tingly feeling feeling in my butt, then I'm going too hard and I need to slow it down a little bit and everything like that. So really understanding that like the mechanics of what's going on um, has been helpful for me to stay in the right zones in training. Yeah, it's so interesting to think about the different types of training that you do to lead up to it. You're not always trying to, to go your fastest. Um, mm -hmm. We have Kylie from Hopewell. Kylie wants to know, what do you eat to stay fit? Oh gosh. Um, so I'm sh maybe some of you guys have heard this before, but I shop the perimeter of the grocery store. Um, that's where you find the real food. <laughs> so lots of like fruits and vegetables, dairy, meat, stuff like that. Um, I prefer to just stay away from a lot of like super processed foods and stuff like that, just to make sure that I'm um, putting really healthy things into my body. But I also think that I run so I can eat. So I eat dessert every day. I'm not that crazy. Um, but yeah, I would say like, I'm a big like salad or sandwich for lunch person. Um, I just made like a super big grain bowl thing um, for dinner last night, which was really good. So yeah, I don't know. So it sounds like there's a lot of just fuel because your body needs a lot of a lot of fuel to be powering yourself through your workouts. Yeah, people are always really impressed that skinny runners can eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark wants to know. How long do you run a day? Um, it depends on the day. Most people are better at answering this question per week. So like I think this week I'm set to run about 65 miles. Um, this morning I did eight miles. It took me about an hour. Um, but then over the weekend, like on Sunday, I'll have a 15 mile long run. And then there's other days where I'm going to the track and maybe I warm up and cool down for three miles on each end of the workout. But then during it, I'm just running really fast bursts on the track. So it really varies throughout every day um, as far as like how much intensity we're putting in and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's a general like usually 50 to 75 miles a week is like pretty normal. <laughs> how how do you decide how long to run? What what type of work? Are you going to do sprints? Are you going to do something longer, shorter? How is that determined? Yeah, so I'm a coach, but I also have a coach, thankfully, because it's a lot easier to have someone who's watching you every day and sort of deciding on your training. But um, I always kind of like describe it as like a level. You have like your really intense workouts and you have your really long like aerobic training. Um, and as the season starts, usually early fall, I'm doing a lot longer stuff and the intensity is pretty low. And then as we get into the season, it sort of shifts the other way. Um, so I'm not running as many miles, but I'm running a lot faster on the track. Um, and that kind of proportion shifts when you're trying to get to your peak races. Okay. <laughs> Jaden wants to know, this is Jaden from Hopewell Crest wondering, have you ever run in a marathon? And if you have, did you train differently? I have not run a marathon. It's kind of funny you ask that because I oftentimes get the, oh, have you run a marathon? And when I say no, they're like, oh, you're not a real runner. Um, but I do run the mile really fast. So that's my primary event I run. Um, 
419.8 is my personal best on the roads in the mile. So um, most of my stuff, I don't think I've run longer than 17 miles. But yeah, definitely if I were training for marathons, I would have to be putting in a lot longer miles to prepare for that. Um, but I kind of want to use all the speed I have until I can't anymore. And then maybe someday I'll try a marathon. <laughs> all right. That's great. You do marathons in retirement. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do when I retire. That's like yeah. Then I'll just run long and slow. <laughs> <a nap. laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, I just wanted to take a quick moment and remind all the students that as we go, you can continue to ask questions. These are great questions that are coming in as follow-ups. And I wanted to ask a little bit about um so some basics about what you wear when you run. Obviously, right now mm -hmm. it's really cold, but if you're gonna be racing your fastest during a competition. How, how does that change versus what you wear in training? Yeah, so honestly, the first thing I think of is my shoes change quite a bit. So um, I even in a workout day, I think we have a picture somewhere in here of a workout day where I have like three pairs of shoes at the track with me because I'll start in some heavier trainers and then I'll flip into some flats, like really light racing shoes that I wear like when I race on the roads. And then I also have spikes that I put on when I race on the track, which are even lighter yet. And then they have like some traction built in so you can kind of cut into the track surface a little more, um, which can be dangerous if you get tripped or somebody steps on you in a race, you might get cut up a little bit. But um, that's like one thing that honestly, like I think it helps a little bit to just lighten the weight on your feet so you feel faster, but it's mostly probably a psychosomatic effect. Um, mm -hmm. It's all on your head. <laughs> but then beyond that, I guess like my, my sponsor ASIC sends me a uniform. So I wear what they send me. It pretty much looks like a swimsuit. It's like just buns, as we say, like the underwear bottoms and a bra top. So yeah, that's kind of weird to some people, but you pretty much feel like you're running naked and that's a good way to run really fast. <laughs> I mean, is that is that the most efficient way to, I think to do so. anything? Like if you think about, especially if it's warm or something like that, you don't want to be overheating at all. So just wearing extra clothing doesn't really help with that. But then um, there's no extra air drag if you're wearing like tighter clothes. It's almost like how swimmers always have like the tight like swimsuits that are, you know, like so what's aerodynamic in the water, whatever that is. But that's kind of how we want to be um, in the world. <laughs> All right. It, it, it looks fast. And they, yeah. they apparently want you to run fast. So that's good. <laughs> we all do. Uh, yeah. Jonathan would like to know, what is your most severe injury? Yeah. Um, so honestly, I've been really lucky other than I had a gymnastics injury in high school. Um, and then most recently, I had um, a stress fracture in my kind of lower back. It's called your sacrum. Um, kind of from a weird thing. I was out walking my dogs um, last like January of 2017, and it was really icy Minnesota day. And my bigger dog kind of tugged on the leash a little bit and um, just yanked my feet right from underneath me, and I just fell straight onto my lower back. Um, but as um, I got up, I was like, well, I got to get home because I'm catching a flight to go to Edinburgh, Scotland to run a cross country race. So um, I kind of just got on the plane, went out there, did what I had to do um, and continued to just race and train, you know, like 60 or 70 miles a week on that sort of like just sore low back. Um, and then after about a month and a half of training, it just seemed to get worse and worse until I literally couldn't walk at all. So we got an MRI and it was a stress fracture. So that's like a really tough spot to get stress fractures. A lot of times runners who get them are, are athletes who are either overtraining or under eating because it's like kind of a sign of your nutrition. But for me, I think it was just that initial impact on the ground. Um, and then just a little bit of something funky in the way I was running because of it that caused me to break down. Wow. That's yeah. really, really incredible to, well, number one, that you, you got the injury from not from running. Oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> so that's, that's where you know how to do everything correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, I mean, how was, how was the recovery from that? Yeah. I mean, how long did it take? And are you, are you back to where you feel really comfortable? Yeah, um, so this was, it was diagnosed in March of like 2017, um, early March, and then I was back running a little bit, like I got to try five minutes on the ground running um, in June. So it was March, April, May, you know, three months about of literally no running. 
Um, but I did cross training in the pool and um, there's this cool thing called the elliptigo. It's like an elliptical, but on wheels. So you can do it outside, which is really nice. Um, so I had other ways to be able to train and stay fit during that time. I just wasn't allowed to really put a lot of impact into that bone. Um, and then even there's a cool thing. I don't have a picture of it, but it's called the um, alter G treadmill where you pretty much are like inside a treadmill and then it inflates. So you're like in this bubble and it can lift you up just a little bit. So you can choose like, I want to run on 50% of my body weight today. So I'll run on about half of me and you don't put as much impact in. And that's a really nice way to sort of transition back into running. So that was a really cool thing to experience too. So you get to, as much as injuries suck, you get to learn a lot of things about the technology that's out there to really get back and be strong again, which is cool. Um, so yeah, I, I was back, I raced in June of that year, and then actually had a really bummer of a situation. I think we did too much physical therapy on the right side of my back where the injury was. So then I got a similar injury on the left side um, and had to take a little bit longer off to fix that one as well. But now we're good. <laughs> Oh, good. I'm glad you finally got there. And it's such a trick, too, because you're having to feel your body and know what it needs to, to be running correctly. Um, yeah. Kylie wants to know, um, oh, how do you prepare just for uh, right before a race? Right before a race? Um, well, I do like a warm up. Um, so usually I run about like 20 minutes to two and a half miles. Um, and then it's kind of a series of like things that get me closer and closer to running fast. So I start with some dynamic stretching. Um, so kind of stretching while you move rather than just doing static stretching, bend and touch your toe kind of thing. Um, and then work into some drills, like some speed training drills and everything where you're pretty much just getting your brain to work with you and get really good, efficient form. Um, and then that'll shift into strides. So that's kind of like just pickups of the pace for maybe like 100 meters at a time. And I'll start like kind of slow and then get faster until I hit race pace and then maybe a little over race pace um, with just like, you know, a breather in between each of those and then change into my racing shoes, whatever they are for the day and race. But um, nutritionally, usually I eat my last big meal about three hours out from a race and then I'll probably still munch on like a bar, a banana or something just like right before um, to make sure that I've like capped off all of my stores. That just made me so nervous. <laughs> It seems like it should be really nerve wracking, but that same preparation, like the steps that I follow to get ready for a race are the same steps that I do to get ready for a workout every day in like a very comfortable environment. So it's actually like really helpful to have a routine that you just know by heart. So then you go through it all. You don't have to think about what you're doing in the moment. You can just focus on like, okay, how do I want to run this race? And um, just kind of repeat some like positive affirmations or things in your head that will make you feel confident and excited about getting out there and doing it. So it really settles you in. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Jane wants to know, do you ever get cramps when you're running? You know, sometimes um, I'm sometimes get like side aches sort of things, if that's the kind of cramps you're talking about, um, particularly if I'm jumping in a little bit of a longer race than I'm used to running. Um, like I said, I race a mile usually, but when I do a 5K here and there on the roads, sometimes I'll feel it. Um, but for a weird, like I caffeinate, I take caffeine um, in like a run gum kind of form before races. And I think I'm figuring out that caffeine has something to do with it. So I'm experimenting in training to see if I can help minimize those um, side aches by just not caffeinating. <laughs> wow. I mean, so much of the, what you do sounds like like an experiment. Because it is. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, if everyone had the, the secrets and had all the science figured out for how to be the fastest, everybody would be running a lot faster. <laughs> right. And every body is so different. So the thing that works for my teammate might not work for me. So I know a ton of people who are sipping on a cup of coffee before they race. I don't like coffee, so that's why I try the run gum. Um, but they say it's supposed to improve endurance performance. So that's why I try to do it, just to kind of keep me on the same level playing field. But maybe that's just not the right thing for me. <laughs> You'll find out. We have another yeah. question in that says, how can one person's body be able to handle a lot of running and another person's not be able to handle a lot of running? Yeah, you know, I think most people's bodies can. 
Um, granted, everybody is, is born a little differently in how they're made and stuff like that. But I think the biggest thing is starting gradually. I definitely didn't run this much when I was a kid or even in high school. I was barely even running that many miles or anything like that. Um, so I think that if you start from some base level and just work yourself up a little bit more carefully over time, um, you'd be surprised at what your body can do. I think like just being inspired by some, you know, average Joes who have run marathons and stuff like that. Um, it's just cool to see that people can do so much more than they really thought they could if they just like set, um, set themselves up appropriately and have a smart training plan. All right. So you're telling me <laughs> I can <can't> run. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I love to run occasionally. Um, I only run a few miles a week. Angel wants to know where and when was your first race? Oh my gosh, my very first race. I probably, besides like the thing that I remember most is like the high school, um, I'll bet a lot of you guys do the presidential fitness testing mile. Um, so I would always try to beat all the boys in my class. That was like all I was about. Um, so that was like the first really experience with racing that I felt like I had was running that mile. Um, and I had my phi ed teacher saying like, you know what, Heather, you're pretty fast. You should go out for running. And since I was a gymnast at the time, I thought running seemed super boring, honestly. I was like, who wants to run in circles all the time? That just seems really dumb. So it wasn't until my gymnastics coach in high school was having us do sprint training um, drills through the basement of our high school. And he was a pretty fast guy too. So he would run um let all of us run ahead and he give us a head start and try and chase us down but i was the first girl on the team that could give him the head start and still chase him down so he's like heather i think you might be in the wrong sport you have to try track so those like kind, kind of like informal races of racing my coach or other boys in my classes were sort of my first race experiences and then um, i joined track my freshman year of high school so that would be kind of a more like organized sport experience with it well I have a question about how long you've been running for so maybe maybe we can talk about how long you've been professionally running yeah yeah so i graduated from college in december of 2009 and joined my team team usa minnesota like right afterwards so just about what will that be nine years this month all right yeah. okay so, so the question is if if you thought oh well running why would i want to run in circles I think a lot of people have this impression of running. So yeah. why running? What is what does running feel like to you? Yeah. Um, I think it feels like freedom. Like it just is an opportunity to just like put everything out there. Um, I think I'm just like a really competitive person. So I love to race and I love to do like fast workouts and like really feel like how much it hurts which sounds kind of dumb but um i just like to be able to push my limits and find out what i'm made of and i know that doing those things is what gets me there um so yeah just being like really goal driven and like once you run a certain time you're like oh man i know there's at least one second during that race where i like fell asleep or i wasn't focused and if i just like stay on and keep pushing myself then this would be you know even better <laughs> okay all of that i think is totally incredible because that, and that's that's why i like watching sports is because you're a unique person and someone who is that driven to do something so well and do it so perfectly sort of it really does embody the spirit of humanity we all want you to run fast and do your best and go oh, she can do that we can all <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And I think that's like the spirit of competition too, is like if I run a race with someone who I want to beat, but she runs a time that's never been run before, then I'm like, man, she just ran an American record. I want that to be my American record someday. And you just like get inspired by those kind of things too. Another question wondering, did you ever think or dream about being a pro runner? <laughs> um, not particularly. I didn't really know what it was, honestly. Like even in college, I, I went to the University of Minnesota on a full scholarship, which is really awesome. Um, but I won an NCAA championship, my very first national meet indoors my freshman year. And that was like kind of what put me on the scene because um, if any of you guys are tracksters, uh, I ran at the half mile, the 800 was my primary event. And in high school, I ran 210, which is like a good Minnesota high school runner. But then all of a sudden I ran 203 in like my second or third meet in college. And that all of a sudden put me at the level of like Olympic trials runners and people on this level that was even beyond where I was competing. So 
um, I think that someone had come up to me afterwards and like, so you just went on CAAs as a freshman. Are you going to go pro now? And I was like, uh, I don't know. What does that mean? So that was kind of my first like introduction to even knowing about that. And then, you know, obviously through the next three years, I wanted to finish my education. Um, I learned a little bit more about it and how there's training groups all over the country that give you opportunities to continue to race and compete. So um, it was around like when I graduated that I thought I still had some potential to explore. So decided to keep going. Was there a particular moment when you thought, yes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a runner and I want to be in the Olympics. And do you have a moment like that? Um, I think yes. Well, I ran, I ran in the Olympic trials as a junior in college, but I was like very ill prepared at that time. Um, because the collegiate season, I ran cross country in the fall, indoor track in the winter, and then outdoor track in the summer. And then the Olympic trials is about a month after the NCAA championships. So it's like really, really long season to kind of prepare for that. Um, but I still just like was so inspired by just being around these people who are so fast and are making Olympic teams that I thought, okay, in four years or eight years or even 12 years now will be the 2020 Olympic trials. That is going to be me. Like I want to be that person and, um, just find out what that's like to be competing at the world stage and representing the U S. And I think that. I hope I'm not frozen right now, but you definitely are, Haley. So I'm just going to hang out for a minute, I guess, and wait to see if we can get us connected again here. And it looks like we are still live, but we're just waiting for Haley to come back. <laughs> Do you guys want to see my dog while you're waiting? He's sitting here. I'm petting him. This is Dewey. <laughs> He's pretty cute. He's a Pomeranian. He's not the one that pulled me down on the ice. Heather, can you hear us? I hear you. Hi. <laughs> well, I was so so doing while I was waiting for you. <laughs> oh, hi there. <laughs> All right, sir. We got cut off. Yeah. But we can we can keep going here. Okay. Um, we had some questions come in about nutrition, but mm -hmm. that led me to think about. Um, all of the tech that you use. Sure. Can you tell us a little bit about the recovery tech that you use? Yeah. Um, so some of the stuff that I use, um, first thing I think of is my GPS watch. Um, that's really awesome because it can just tell me my pace and um, everything like that while I'm out there. And even it keeps track of how many steps I'm taking per minute because they say like the most efficient runners are running about 160 to 180 steps per minute. Um, but then for like recovery and stuff like that, I use um, something called Normatec. Um, they were like these big old inflatable pants essentially that you stick your legs into and then they kind of um, slowly compress from your ankles all the way up. So you really want to have good blood flow return. And if I have like a really heavy workout, you just kind of build up all that extra junk in your blood. So um, just helps it flow back to your heart um, and kind of recover a little bit better. And, and you can look super cool. 
Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Especially like for the Olympic trials, there's three rounds of the 1500. So you're racing that you're most like competitive races three times in four days. It's usually like a Friday, Saturday or Monday or whatever like that. You have one day off before the final. Um, so being able to kind of flush through all that stuff right before you have to go out and kind of have a maximal effort performance again is really good. <laughs> And is that the main, we have a question that says, what sort of body science do you keep in mind as you run? If you have big, uh, a big weekend of races or a day of races, what kind of body science do you keep in mind as you go from one to the other? Yeah, gosh, I mean, I think that a lot of what running is, is just like basic good health. So I'm thinking about my sleep. Um, and the consistency of my sleep leading up to a big event. Um, they always say like you should get eight hours of sleep a night or whatever. I go for nine. Um, and then I try to go to bed and wake up at the same time every day just because you have like this cycle um, of wakefulness and sleeping that is good to stay on schedule. Um, and then obviously your nutrition and the timing of nutrition. So that's kind of just like your metabolism and understanding what types of um, like carbohydrates or protein and stuff like that in what ratios you need to be able to perform at your best. And um, just even recognizing and understanding like in a race situation, if I start to feel like that lactic come a little early, I know that means I need to back off so that I'm ready to have a kick at the end of the race or whatever it is. Um, but Honestly, like race day, I think the study like psychology is actually almost most important because what's going on in your head um, is so huge to be able to overcome because your body's going to send you signals about being tired and tell you like, hey, we're going to die. You need to slow down. But really, you can push through that and still um, like find more within yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, Kevin, we could more on that in a moment. <laughs> Kevin wants to know, did anyone in your family run? Um, you know, growing up, my mom did a little bit of running, but she was kind of just like, she had the same six mile loop that she did every day. And I would like ride my bike with her while she ran. Um, but I think like we have a great uncle Harry or something like that. But my parents always say like, Heather must've got her talent from Harry because he was like a collegiate runner way back in the day. But yeah, long gone now. <laughs> I think this might be all you. <laughs> I'm just going to say, um, so <laughs> do you, uh, do you have um, a set kind of schedule every day for running, eating, sleeping? Do you keep it fairly regimented so that you have something to base uh, any changes off of? I try to, to some degree, but um, as, as a runner, like as a professional runner, I do get paid to do this, but it's not enough just to live on alone. So I still, I, I coach a high school cross country girls team. And then I also work at a run specialty store. So I kind of help fit people for the right shoes. Um, so depending on the day of the week, like tonight I'll work from five to 8 PM just to close the store and stuff like that. So dinner will be a little later just cause I don't really have time in such a short shift to get in the back and eat. But, um, yeah, generally I try, like I said, my sleep for sure. And then just making sure that I'm getting in good three, like solid meals and snacks a day and stuff like that is kind of more important to me. Um, but I like to run in the morning if I can. Um, just to kind of get up, eat something right away, and then just get out the door and do it. But like right now, it's sort of indoor track season. And the only time that my team has access to the track is at four o'clock. So we sort of have to shift our schedule and um, go in the afternoon. And by the time I'm leaving, it's dark out. Oh, Minnesota. Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, Bella would like to know, what is a sponsor? Can you explain to, uh, to everyone um, how a sponsorship works? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, at least in the running world and every, everything's a little bit differently working, but I um, first signed on with an agent um, who's like a person who kind of speaks on my behalf to all the shoe companies that exist. Um, and so he kind of says like, okay, I have this athlete, her name's Heather, she's run such and such times, she's cute, she's nice, she like does stuff with kids, whatever the case may be, because they want the whole package. They don't want just fast people who are jerks. Um, <laughs> and yeah they sort of try to negotiate the best like contract deal for me. So within there, it'll kind of explain like what I get paid on a regular basis. Um, but then also like I have things in my contract that if I run certain times, I get a bonus um, and how much product they're gonna give me every month. I just get to go on like asicsamerica.com and order free shoes every month for myself to make sure I'm wearing new kicks. 
um, and stuff like that. So yeah, essentially it's just like you are wearing the brand. So I wear the ASICS brand every time I compete and I represent them and try to kind of promote goodwill and make people like the brand because um, they sponsor cool athletes. And um, yeah, That's so it's kind of that makes sense to me. Like you, mm -hmm. you are ASICs. You're you're a professional runner who who yeah. kind of has it all and is training to do things that nobody else is going to do. Training to be mm -hmm. better than everyone else. I think they did a good job. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, Gabby D wants to know what's your favorite part of your job. Oh gosh. Um, Probably the fact that I just love to run with people like my teammates and just spending time with people in that way is probably my favorite part. Like just going for long runs with my teams, like the number of stories that come out and just like things that people share and like having that quality time um, with a bunch of fun people that I love is like pretty awesome. Um, so that was like definitely the thing I missed the most when I was injured is I just wasn't allowed to train with a bunch of people. And so I think like having the perspective of coming back now um, from that injury, it makes me realize like, okay, I thought I liked running fast. I thought I liked the competition, but like, I love the people the most and just like the quality time I get with them is really cool that like, it's my job, but it's also like my fun social time of the day to come to practice. <laughs> and it's something that you think of as a kind of a solitary sport, but yeah. it's not a solitary life to learn how to do it. No, definitely not. And my husband runs too. He's run like a bunch of marathons and stuff like that. So he actually does a lot of my training with me. And I say that like usually our best like conversations of the day happen when we're just like side by side on a run or if he comes to the track and tries to help pace me and stuff like that. But he's since he's a more of a long distance runner, he doesn't like to come on the really fast days because I kind of leave him in the dust. <laughs> I can understand that. I <laughs> <laughs> That's great, though. <laughs> um, Laura wants to know, um, what kind of goals do you set for yourself? Yeah, um, so I think I set, I'm like a huge goal setter person. Um, I like to set a lot of like performance goals in terms of just like times I want to run. So um, like my primary focus in college was the 800 and I run two flat, like two minutes, 0.04. So like just barely under two minutes in the 800. So one of my really big goals is to run 150 anything, honestly, just sub two. Um, and then I really want to break four minutes and four seconds in the 1500, which is like the metric mile. Um, so those times are really fun to like shoot for because you know just exactly when you hit it. Um, but I also really want to make an Olympic team. Um, and this coming year, the World Outdoor Championships are in Doha, Qatar. So I want to try to make that world team and represent the U.S. there. Um, and then beyond that, I think like I want to find a way to be able to like parlay this running career into a future of like supporting um, young athletes, especially girls, to be able to um, kind of pave the way for them uh, to see that these things are possible for them, too. And like during my injury time where I wasn't allowed to kind of chase my normal goals, um, I decided that I wanted to do 15 pull ups. So I know I said I like doing pull ups a lot, but I thought it'd be really cool to do 15 pull ups in a row. Um, and as long as I wasn't allowed to use my legs, that seemed like a good thing to try. And I did it. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. <laughs> that is fantastic. Now, just in general, why, why is it important to you or the sport to mm -hmm. set goals? Yeah, I think that that's like your why. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard that phrase before, find your why. Um, it's sort of what fuels your motivation because on days like today when it feels like eight degrees outside in Minnesota, it's really easy to say, I want to hit the alarm clock and just go back to sleep. But then you just call to mind your goals and think like, okay, this is what I'm doing this for. I really want to achieve that. And it means a lot to me, um, not just to me, but also to all the people who have supported me, um, my coaches and teammates and my parents and husband and everyone who understands the sacrifices I make because it's a really cool job. But sometimes I miss really close friends' weddings because I'm traveling for a competition and I'm in Europe for a month in the summer. Or, you know, somebody has a really fun thing they want me to come do, but I have to go to bed early. So I'm the lame one who says, sorry, I can't stay and stuff like that. So um, for me, like it's honoring my gift. I feel like I've been given something special to work with, um, but it's also honoring all those people who have supported me to chase these goals. So all that is my why, like my reason to do it, my motivation in the first place. We have a question, someone wondering who is your hardest opponent and why? Uh-huh. Hmm. Well, 
if I ever had, and I hope you guys don't go look her up and tell her this, but if I ever had a nemesis, um, probably in college, there was this girl named Gina Gall. Um, she was really fast in the 800 too. And she was born literally one day, I think her day is either one day before or one day after mine. So we always said we were like birthday buddies too. But it seemed like we would go back and forth with so many of our events, um, like chasing each other and finishing either right before or right after. Um, so she was probably someone who like, I knew I had a good day if I stayed with her, or if I beat her. Um, and she actually did make the Olympic team in 2012. So um, I have some, some big shoes to fill coming up in my next Olympics trials. But um, yeah, that's maybe like somebody who's really, really tough for me to beat. <laughs> you have a lot, you have a lot of people who are supporting you and you were talking mm -hmm. about your why. Does that also come with a certain amount of pressure? Um, a little bit. And that's something that I kind of had to work on throughout my career is like, I'm not, I'm not doing this just to please people like they, they're happy to see me do well, but that's like, not what I should be motivated by. Um, so yeah, it does come with pressure, but I always like try to translate pressure into um, positive expectations. So if I'm coming into a race, I've, I've won four US championships in the road mile. They call me queen of the road mile, actually, which is pretty fun. Um, so you could say that's a really high pressure situation to go back into your next US um, like race in the mile. But for me, it's like, okay, I've done this before. People expect me to do it again, and that's a good thing. So just kind of script, like switching that script around a little bit so that um, it's all about something that is leading towards positivity. I like that. <laughs> also like Queen of the Road Mile. That's oh, thanks. <laughs> a title. That's fantastic. Uh, Cody wants to know how many races you've won and how many times you were close to winning but didn't. Oh my gosh. Um, I could not even count like how many races I've won in my life. I definitely have run a lot of, um, won a lot of road miles in like the past like six or eight years. That was like right where I really found confidence in running professionally. So it took me a little while to like get on my feet and be like, okay, I'm racing the best athletes in the world. Like how am I supposed to do this? Cause you can really get in your head. Um, but then I kind of figured out that like I'm strongest if I race from the front and make people work for it and start with like a super long kick from a far ways out from the finish line and just pull all the energy out of people. Um, and that works really well on the roads for me. So um, like I said, I won the four US titles. I won a bunch of big 10 championships and like a na national championship in college and stuff like that. But um, you know, it's there's a lot of small races that I do here and there that I might win, but there are plenty more that I have not. <laughs> I think you learn just as much from your success, but more from your failures um, and getting really close to what you wanted to do and just recognizing all those little things you could have done differently to make it better. But I think that if I've learned anything from racing, it's that the pain of any race like pales in comparison to the pain of regret afterwards if I know I didn't give my all. So. Um, just giving myself an opportunity to have my best day possible is always something I focus on when I get out there. Okay, we have time for one more question. <laughs> so what advice would you give to students who want to become a professional athlete and do something like you do? Oh, gosh. Um, I would say kind of two things. Um, well, three. Make sure you have the passion for it because it looks really cool, but you have to love what you do in order to put in as much work as it takes to get there. Um, to surround yourself with really good people. I think if you have a good support system, good coaches, people who are going to take you on the right path, because it's really easy to try and skip some steps and do things that maybe look like cheating or are cheating um, to be the best that you can be. And that's just not fulfilling in the end. Um, and then lastly, just like be prepared for that work. Like you have to sort of want to work hard and commit your whole life to it and just have you like live the lifestyle of an athlete. Um, and if you're willing to do that, if you like to be lame and go to bed early, then you're probably set. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are out of time because we could just keep going and going. Um, thank you so much and sharing for sharing your story with us today. And um, of all of us are going to be cheering you on thank from you. afar. And I can't wait to see you uh, run some more races. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thank you. Bye, Bye. guys.
<laughs> and we actually are having one more event this this uh, winter before the new year. On December 13, our next event will be featuring STEM role model Michelle O'Kana. Michelle is the managing director of the Harvard Medical School Neurobiology Imaging Facility, where she uses cutting edge technology and techniques from a broad range of scientific research to help visualize experiments. It's going to be incredibly cool. She does some amazing work. Until then, from Jason Learning, I'm Haley Nelson, and we'll see you next time on Jason Live.